the first episode of our proposed uh, solutions to the perfect storm. My name is Mutin Tanketani and I'm the national coordinator for the Zambia Alliance for Agroecology and Biodiversity. We will start now. I know we are still quite few, but we will go ahead and start our webinar. Hopefully we will get more people as we go along. So just a brief background, the perfect storm, as we are calling it, is a word that was uh, coined by a consortium of organizations that have come together to, uh, uh, to look at what is happening in the world. So we have a combination of environmental and economic challenges that have hit the world, and Zambia is not an exception. And these include, among others, the escalating prices of fuel, which we know is uh, uh, very unpredictable even at the moment. We also had, in Zambia, we, exper we experienced uh, a, quite a poor rainy season, which was uh, characterized by the late onset of the rains and flooding in some areas thereafter. And already the crop forecast that was released by the Minister of Agriculture last week showed that we will have 25% reduction in uh, uh, the main crop production between 2021 and uh, 2022. We also have the, um, the, the, the fact that we have depleted soils in Zambia generally and uh, the escalating prices of uh, fertilizers, which um, is going into the fertilizers keep increasing, the price of fertilizers have kept increasing and right now we are looking at record high in terms of prices of fertilizers and that is coupled with Zambia's uh, depleted soils. So these um, are compounded by the fact that donor aid now is being shifted from African countries into Ukraine. Already like for in our case as Zab, we've had one donor that is already saying that uh, the funding will not uh, continue because they have shifted funds to Ukraine to uh, take to areas where they are uh, hosting refugees. So all these uh, factors that are likely to affect the way food is produced, how it is uh, consumed and so many factors which will lead to shortages in food, but also consolidating the already existing conditions of hunger and uh, malnutrition. As such, um, we have come together with uh, the Mendel University, Solidaridad, Grassroots Trust, ICRAF, and uh, other partners to propose certain solutions. And this, as we have said, is the first episode in a series of solutions. At the moment, we do not have a, a definite se uh, sequence of how these will be, but we hope that as we go along, we are going to have very uh, systematic steps on how we present these uh, um, solutions. So today, our main presenter, our main speaker is uh, Father Paul from Kasisi Agricultural uh, Training Center. And as we know, Kasisi Agricultural Training Center are the pioneers of uh, organic farming in Zambia right now. And they, they are also uh, running a course a, a, a diploma course in uh, agroecology. So I will hand over to Father Paul now. Thank you. So um, good morning, everybody. And um, thank you very much for that introduction, Matenta. That, that was very um, uh, comprehensive, a, a very good uh, assessment of where we are. So let me... Um, um, share my screen. Um, I'm not sure the right screen has come up here. Um, oh, there we are. 
Okay. So, um, so this is what we're presenting as Cassisi is just one approach and, um, you know, the, it's certainly not um, a comprehensive approach, but it's, it's something we were looking at, something that, that could be presented uh, perhaps to government and also to ourselves as um, NGOs and uh, FBOs and, and uh, CSOs. Uh, if, if we feel that this could be a way to, to um, help between now and the end of uh, October or November. So we're calling it a blitz approach to the perfect storm. So it's responding to the fertility needs of farmers for the 22-23 season. And if we define the problem, uh, and I think as Mutenda has, has um, uh, explained it very clearly, is the, the, the problems are climate change and, and the effects of climate change, uh, uh, very hot, very cold, um, excessive uh, rain, everything is an extreme, either, either droughts or floods, uh, et cetera. High prices of fertilizers, um, doubling to tripling, um, some cases, fuel prices, uh, up globally, uh, probably the unavailability of mineral fertilizers as well, uh, because uh, of, of the war in the Ukraine. Uh, certainly, the World Food Program are talking about uh, food shortages, and probably affecting us uh, on the continent here more than anywhere else. Uh, poor soil fertility, uh, poor water infiltration rates. Um, if you remember. Uh, back at the end of January, seeing uh, these heavy rains in Choma and water just running off the fields. I remember seeing one one um, picture of, 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 that, of that situation, and I was wondering what river it was, but it was not a river. It was a huge amount of, of water running across uh, a field. So rather than the, the, the water, the rain uh, infiltrating into the ground, it was just running across the field, taking a lot of topsoil as well, so not filling in the, um, the, the, um, the aquifers below the ground. And also uh, what we call dead soils, so soils with no biology. <clears throat> so the price of and availability of mineral fertilizers is an issue for the government and for farmers. Uh, fertilizers are very expensive for farmers to purchase and for the government to subsidize. And then uh, the transporting the fertilizers from overseas and across the country is also a huge expense for government and I'm sure a log logistical nightmare. So how to produce maize and other crops in Zambia in the 22-23 rainy season without mineral fertilizers? Um, maybe before I go to the next slide, I'll ask Omali to show us a, um, a two minute video showing this, this uh, what I was talking about this water running across uh, the field in Choma. Can you can you show us your the the, the, the video, Omali? All right, just a minute. Okay. Okay, maybe just stop sharing the report, then I can share my screen. Uh, okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Are we able to see? Versus Somali. So this is what I was talking about. This all this um, water running across fields. I thought it was a river, but it's it's across fields. So the water is not infiltrating into the ground. So that's a, a huge problem. And some of that is caused by the mineral fertilizers that we're applying to our soils, uh, especially potassium. Potassium hardens the soil. And um, research has shown now in the uh, University of Illinois, they've shown that there's enough potassium in our soils for the next 8,000 years. So why would we want to put potassium on our soils and make them hard? Sometimes in wars, they when they need to make a, a an airstrip for planes to land, they'll put potassium on the ground and that hardens the soil and it acts as, as an airstrip. So we as farmers are putting that onto our soils and then we wonder why our soils are as hard as cement. The conclusion is that uh, water cannot infiltrate because of the, 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 the ground is so hard and there's no biology in as well. So the way to fix that is to add biology. We can go in with big rippers and so on, but we can do it uh, much cheaper and better with more biology. The biology will uh, aggregate the soil and make it more friable so that water can infiltrate um, in, into the ground and then fill, uh, fill the aquifers. And later in the season when there's a drought, the, the moisture is there. Okay, thank you very much, Omani. So I'll go back, I'll share my screen now. So that's what I was talking about there, the, the poor water infiltration rates. So you can see there that certainly is, is um, uh, was poor infiltration rate. In fact, it was probably none. And a lot of the um, topsoil, just running out down to, to the river or measure to the lake. So, uh, so this is what we're pr proposing is, is just a, um, uh, exactly a proposal to uh, the response. Um, and so we're suggesting that to train farmers uh, in the next three or four months on making on-farm fermented biofertilizers or Bokashi fertilizer. So what is a Bokashi fertilizer? It's a partly fermented organic material it includes manure, dry matter, soil, charcoal or ash, bran, molasses, yeast, minerals, and water. And then for field crops, you bury about one handful next to each plant planting station, uh, which that translates roughly to two tons per lima. And depending on the state of your soil fertility, you might need to apply a top dressing as the crop is growing. Otherwise, if, if the soil is, is fairly uh, healthy, you probably will not need a top dressing. Um, again, uh, putting something like um, sun imp or in, in the, uh, as, as, the corn, as the maize is up uh, knee high could also be another way of adding nitrogen at that time. So the, the um, realizing that mineral fertilizers are expensive and will only get more expensive for farmers, and the government, KDC is proposing to the government that a blitz messaging to the farming community in the next five months before the next rainy season be considered. So the message is that farmers will make their own on-farm fertilizer. This Bokashi has proven to produce excellent yields and quality products. But a very important consideration with this Bokashi is that it be a quality product. If it is not properly made, then the desired results will not be seen. And so the farmers will say, oh, well, the Bokashi doesn't work, but it has to be done properly. So it has to be, um, there's certain steps. It's not, it's simple and not, not complicated, but if farmers strive to start to, to um, shortcut the system, then the, the desired result, the quality will not be there. 
So the benefits of on-farm fertilizers, such as Bokashi, is that it is much cheaper for the farmer and for the government. The yields are improved, improve soil structure, better water infiltration. So what we saw in that video there, that the water is not infiltrating. With, with a better soil structure, the water will infiltrate. Even with very large amounts of rain, the water will infiltrate. Um, and also, it was very important for the farmer. It leaves more money in the farmer's pocket. So this is the uh, picture of, of the making the, the Bokashi. So it can be done, uh, a pile, let's say, would, would be about a ton, could be made easily in half a day. Uh, so this is just, uh, you have to, you have to um, move it two or three times to make sure that it's well um, uh, mixed. Farmers in the Changwe and Rufunsa districts are also making this organic biofertilizer and they're selling that uh, to, to their friends and even people from Lusaka are coming to buy it. So that's again, is made on farm. And this would be a good product for priming the seed uh, prior to planting and also for um, spraying, doing a full year spray uh, as the crop is um, growing. So, um, so what logistics will be used for getting this message out? So the, the, certainly the training is important. And then who would provide the training? So we're, we're um, uh, considering the government agricultural extension officers. And uh, if uh, uh, NGOs are, are willing and as well, field staff of NGOs such as Caritas, ZAB, CDDT, Pelham, Scope, Grassroots Trust, et cetera. They would provide a one day training in the villages. And the field staff of these groups would come to KTC for a two day uh, TOT training. The trainings in the villages for the farmers will be one day. The training will be very specific and include the making of Bokashi and li liquid biofertilizer. The solid Bokashi is to be applied at planting time. The liquid biofertilizer is to prime the seed at planting time with microbes and the spray on the plants as they are growing. The liquid biofertilizer remains viable for 12 months. Now, <clears throat> so I'm talking about microbes, and it's something that we, we have to be uh, mindful of that it's it's the, the biology. Agriculture is based on biology and not on chemistry. For the last 70 years, we've been considering chemistry as being the basis of, um, of farming, and that, that was a, a, a wrong understanding of, of um, how living things uh, act. So we need to get biology back in the soil. It's not that we're denying uh, chemistry, but the basis has to be um, biology. So how do we go about the sensitization of this? Uh, probably radio and TV programs, address the House of Chiefs, address the Subcommittee on Agriculture, uh, simple illustrated laminated handouts, uh, study circle manuals on making bokashi and liquid biofertilizers. These already exist. In fact, the um, sky has, has, has this, uh, these made. And I think they, were, they said they would be um, quite possibly willing to um, print some more copies. And that's not sure, but the, 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 they think that they could do that. Uh, social media on a WhatsApp group. So it must be recognized that in this blitz program, the message is singular and very focused. Eventually further trainings will be important so that trainers in particular grasp the whole message of organic production. There is much more than just making on-farm fertilizers to be a successful agroecological farmer. Uh, but what we're looking at now is something to, to address the situation in the next few months before the next rainy season. So other topics that need to be eventually taught include communal herd holistic grazing, no burning of crop residue. Well, in fact, that could also be included in the message that the farmers would receive this year. Uh, cover crops, uh, interplanting legumes with maize, uh, no or minimum tillage, uh, biological pesticides, agroforestry, Johnson Sioux, static compost, et cetera. Uh, so the cover crops, just to come back to, to this topic of the cover crops, the, um, and in, in the past, we were always talking about a, a green manure crop, and that's that's good. But a, a cover crop would would include maybe 10, 15, or 20 species mixed together and planted on one field. And so, with with the bio uh, biodiversity of uh, of uh, plants above ground and also of different roots, 
we would be enhancing more biology, of biology, which would be helpful in, in uh, future crops. And as I mentioned there, the no, no burning can easily be included in this one day message that the farmers would be. So a current experience that's happening, a Mr. Michello from a farmer from Capete A in Changui has an arrangement with Chief Bunda Bunda to train all the farmers in his chiefdom. The 300 headmen will mobilize their subjects for a one day training. Mr. Michello and his team of eight people will train eight villages every day. So that means after 38 days, all the farmers and chief uh, Bunda Bunda chief them will have received the basic training on how to make Bokashi. And Mr. Michello is asking each village to pay a, 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 for a payment of 1500 kwacha for the one day training. That translates roughly to 30 kwacha per family. So this is a model that, that uh, sounds uh, that's uh, feasible and, 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 and is working. But perhaps in other parts of the country, something else uh, could be could be um, done, a modification of this particular model. But what is the recipe for enriched bokashi? Uh, so there it is. Um, and this would be enough for, for, for producing uh, one lima. Um, so you yeah, need maize bran, chicken manure, cow dung, goat manure. But these can be, you know, th th this is kind of a, the ideal, but if you don't have um, goat manure, you don't have cow dung, I mean, other things can be done in, instead. Uh, and then um, uh, like uh, light black soil or, or previous bokashi, or if you have a compost that's partly decomposed, you can start with that. And that would be excellent, in fact. Um, uh, charcoal uh, or well-kept ashes. And then you need the yeast um, and then some molasses. So everything that can is is available within within Zambia. Um, so they, in fact, it'd be good not to, to to have farmers not burn their fields so that the residue is there that they can go into making the bokashi. Um, as I mentioned, that this this large heap of bokashi is suitable for one lima, and that uh, can be made easily in in um, in half a day. Um, and then, you know, an, another addition could be titonia. Uh, powder can be added during the maturation period. So, you know, farmers can, can play around with this a little bit. The maturation period for Bokashi is 14 days and it will store uh, for three months if kept away from direct sunlight under shade and protected from rain. And the application would be two handfuls per hole station of maize at uh, planting time. And when that maize is at knee height, uh, another handful of bokashi could be added. Uh, or as I mentioned, uh, something like sandem could also be planted in between there, at, between your maize plants at that time. And that will add nitrogen to, to your um, maize. And for legumes and poor sandy soils, mixing a small amount of lime with the bokashi can be helpful. And uh, so the bogashi would be drilled next to the, to the legume plants. And I think this last point here is very, very important. Seed priming is advisable. I remember being in a, in a field day in a village about two months ago, and this lady was very uh, um, insistent that I see her, her, her field. And she had some maize growing on, on the field where prior uh, she had never been able to grow any crop at all on that field. And what she did, she primed her, her seed with bokashi before planting and the, the biology then was able to find nutrients in the ground to get the maize plant going. So, 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 so the, the, the biology is more important than the organic matter, but you need the organic matter to feed the biology. Um, the recipe for making the liquid biofertilizer, uh, very simple here. Uh, you can, uh, I'm sure that um, Zab will, will make this available than anybody that wants to to, um, to make some. And another uh, good um, recipe is this, what we call the solid native micro mixture. And um, so just getting a little bit of um, forest uh, uh, silage at the top, very top of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the soil out the, under, under, under trees, uh, which hasn't been disturbed. And um, that would contain a lot of biology. 
And uh, this is uh, would be ready to be used after one month. And that again could be added to your um, to your Bokashi. So what would be the action plan that we're thinking about? So uh, the, the first would be the general awareness to the whole public. And that would be for the whole public. And, and um, we're looking at GRZ, but maybe as well, uh, NGOs could also be involved in this and funding uh, GRZ. All the funding we've got on this action plan would be GRZ, but maybe some, uh, some groups of uh, yourselves that are listening to today, might say, oh, oh, we can help on this or we can help on that. So that would be great. Uh, visiting the House of Chiefs um, and prepare laminated illustrated material. So, uh, so some, something very, very simple for farmers to be able to look at and then they, they can follow that, um, uh, those illustrations. Uh, radio programs, TV programs, uh, YouTube videos, and the vernacular adverts, um, study circle manuals, as I mentioned, those are, are already available. Um, demo plots, field days. Um, the field days would only come at, at the end of the, of the season, but demo plots could be set up uh, at the very beginning of, of the season. Um, so the, the, um, some equipment would be needed um, you know, so wheelbarrow, um, shovels, uh, things like that. Um, the coordination um, would be at a national level, probably the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, communication uh, within farmer groups. Um, so there, how to do that, probably tablets and smartphones injected at strategic sites, uh, the training of trainers, um, at, at done at KETC. Um, and then think that the, the last point here, the culture anthropology, I think it's very, very important. I think we, we always forget this, but I know in Andhra Pradesh and in India, they're, they're having a lot of success in, uh, in developing a, a, an organic system there across the whole, that whole province. And uh, it, they don't emphasize it very much, but it's, um, um, it's, it's very part of, much part of their, of their culture. So when they go to a field and they have a short prayer and it's all part of, of their, um, uh, uh, and they talk about it at, when they're having meals and so on. So it's very much part of their culture. So this is um, um, a maize field um, that, that's grown with Bokashi. I'm not sure, we're having some, some uh, red lines across here. I'm not sure what that's all about. Um, and uh, here's uh, ground nuts and, and beans interplanted. So biodiversity within the plant. And then on the right there, you can see, I think those are um, um, sweet potatoes, if I'm not mistaken. And then yesterday we had the visit of the EU ambassador to Zambia. And uh, he was very, very interested in, in, in all this work. And uh, when he spoke, he spoke very, very strongly about the need for uh, organic agriculture or agroecology and, and uh, f uh, family farms as opposed to large uh, commercial farmers producing the food. So he was very, very positive about, about this whole approach. And you can see uh, one farmer brought all these seeds that you see on, on the table there on the right a whole range of, of seeds. So years ago, he would have planted probably just maize, but now he has maybe close to 20 different um, uh, species of crops that he, that he grows um, on his farm. So I think that's the end of my presentations. Okay, questions, I'm not sure um, Matenta or Omali, you can, you can direct them to, to me. Now, um, how do I uh, stop sharing? Okay, there we are. Thank you. Thank you, Father Paul. We are grateful for that presentation. Uh, so as we can see, the, the Bliss approach that he has presented talks about how we can achieve the greatest impact within the shortest period of time, how you can create the ripple effect uh, of sending out this message within the shortest period of time and reaching the, the largest uh, number of people at the same time. 
And as organizations, as individual organizations, I think the call to us is how are we able to send people to be trained who can immediately go back in the communities and start training? So at this point, we'll take uh, comments, questions. Uh, Omali will be, uh, will be in charge of picking out the hands. Please raise your hand so that you can, we can go into plenary now. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we have a hand from uh, Mr. Eugene Tabirika. You can go. Thank you. Well, you don't seem to get uh, Mr. Kaviri. I think he must be having network challenges. Yeah, or, or maybe he did not uh, unmute himself. He's actually dropped off. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, there's a question from Annie asking how many farmers are targeted this year. So this is a program that is uh, um, uh, open to everyone, which means that uh, what Kasisi is asking is, uh, uh, for example, and your Ubuntu organization, do you have resources to send people there to be trained? And then you can determine how many of your farmers want to be trained between now and the time that people start land preparation uh, for, for, for this coming rainy season. So this program is uh, it has no targets as in the individual organizations, apart from Kasisi, of course, that uh, is already doing this. And this is a series that will talk about so many other things, like he had said, there are so many other topics that are not uh, yet uh, covered, landscape management, holistic land management in, in relation to livestock and all those things. So for today's topic, what we are looking at is uh, uh, making organic fertilizers and how we can create a ripple effect within the shortest period of time, the kind of ripple that would uh, you know, like, like lighting these fires, how can individual organizations light these fires that can then reach uh, the masses? Yeah, thank you. Okay, that's correct. And so we're, uh, in fact, um, um, maybe a bit uh, too courageous or ambitious, but we're uh, also, if, if we can get uh, government on board to target the country. So that's why we're looking at, at, a, at a single message to try to and and uh, to try to get across um, the, the whole country. I think there's um, if I'm if I'm not mistaken about 300 um, chieftains in the in the country. So if if every uh, chieftain can can um, accept this, and then we can within maybe two months get the message out to each uh, chieftain, uh, we, you know we we can get it across the country and before the rains come, get the message out. Yeah. Okay, we have a hand from uh, Mr. Hosea. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Ant brother, for the presentation. Uh, my question is just on, uh, are, are there farmers, are there organizations who have tried to package them to package the Bokashi and the biofertilizers for sale for farmers who are not willing to manufacture or to make them at home? And if there are any, how much would it cost, like, you know, 50 kg bag or uh, 20 kg? And the last question is, how long is the shelf life in case you package it? How long would it stay in a, in a shop or out, like, before it's, uh, it's bad? Thank you. I'm following you from uh, Kenya, and I'm 
very happy for this session. Thank you. Well, that was, yeah, very uh, nice to hear, to hear from you. Um, so the shelf life on, on the solid Bokashi, three months, and on the liquid and the, and the bio uh, is uh, 12 months. And uh, the farmers are selling the, the uh, that um, bio liquid fertilizer for 40 kwacha um, per liter. For, so uh, um, roughly uh, 17 kwacha is one US dollars. So you can work out how much that would be in, in Kenya shillings. Now, I, I don't know that any farmer has done enough uh, solid bokashi to package and sell, but that's certainly something that, that can be done. Um, it, it would be possible, but, but I don't I don't know that anybody has done that yet. I know um, one farmer has, has, has prepared some and uh, in, in a very large quantity and given it to the Ministry of uh, Education for them to, to um, experiment with that at their uh, at the Ministry of Education headquarters so that they can see and then hopefully the school if, if it works well they're happy with it that they can get the message out to the various schools across the country. So hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Much. That was my question. If I can add one more, is uh, not a question but a comment. Is uh, I'm working with farmers and there's always a feeling of uh, they don't want to manufacture the bio fertilizer to make at home. They would want to buy. I don't know if it's the same feeling in Zambia or in your in your areas where you're working with the farmers. Just a curiosity to feel how the farmers on the side normally how they perceive this. We make the cost for us. I've seen farmers making the compost, making the fertilizers. They could, if they could find to buy, it would be much easier. I don't know how it is down there. Well, okay, I can offer uh, um, my uh, um, understanding of it, but maybe uh, um, Mutenta and Omali or other people on on the on the chat here on the group can also put in their their um, experiences. I, I think that the, 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 certainly the poor um, farmers would prefer to make it themselves. Those that, that would work, maybe the farmers that would work in Lusaka and come to their farms on the weekend, they would probably want to buy it. That would be the way I, I, I see it. But maybe uh, Omari or Mutenta or other people might, might um, uh, have different uh, experiences on that. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you, uh, Brother Paul. I think yeah, it, it is just like you've uh, mentioned it. Mostly farmers would rather make it for themselves, especially those that are owning their own uh, uh, pieces of land. Then for those that usually commute to their farms would rather buy it from somewhere and apply in their farms. Yeah, thank you. Then I can see a hand from... Um, There's a hand from Sebastian. Yes, Sebastian. Do you want to go first, Bridget? Morning, everyone. Thanks for the presentation, Paul. Uh, okay, let me go ahead. I can see Bridget's mic still muted. Um, if we're going to roll this out as a national strategy, do we have any data that you can share with us, maybe Paul or anybody else, about the efficacy of uh, different soil types of Bokashi? I mean, obviously, it works in some conditions, um, but how well does it work? And then I think Ruth just asked a question in the chat box. What's the actual cost of the Bokashi? Because you've got to remember that, you know, farmers are used to the single best investment from a farmer is 450 kwacha for the FISIP pack in a year. So if whatever you're proposing is going to be much more expensive than that, then farmers are going to be resistant to it automatically. Uh, so I've seen, uh, you know, uh, maize, bran and molasses and all kinds of other stuff there. Do you have a costing for that, both around Lusaka and 
further, you know, further afield in a country if it's going to be a national thing. You know, is is molasses available? Is maize bran available everywhere? Have we, have we done a, an actual costing? And the most important thing is going to be that costing, both in terms of labor and materials. And the other thing is going to be the efficacy of the material. Uh, and I, I doubt very much whether the government are going to go for anything on the, on you know what what we as a group say. I mean, they may do a small amount, but if you're talking about scaling this over the whole country for literally millions of farmers, then it's going to need some kind of uh, scientific backing. So my question is really, uh, do we have that? And if we don't, what's our strategy towards? Uh, working towards that in the future. Thanks, everyone. Uh, morning, Seb. Uh, Seb, it's good to see, uh, hear from you again. Um, yes, as I mentioned in my presentation, if, if the um, farmers, when they're making the bokashi, try to cut corners and don't add this or don't add that, then the, 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 the quality will not be there and the, the result will be poor. Uh, and I don't think it matters so much on that, what soil type that this is applied. Um, you certainly would get better better results if you already have a, a compost pile, even if it's not fully decomposed, and add that to to your um, uh, mix because you'll have a lot of biology in that compost because it'll be out in the open. The um, yes, like certainly we're, we're close to Lusaka, so molasses and yeast is not a problem for us. Um, further uh, inland. Um, Probably these agents that are selling the uh, fertilizer and uh, agrochemicals, they could probably supply in their stores uh, molasses and yeast if, if they knew that there was a market for that. Uh, I don't have the, the costing with me right here, Seb. I, I know we have it somewhere, but I, I, I don't have it with me right here, so I can't give it to you. But it certainly it would be less than, than, uh, than fertilizer because you know molasses and, and yeast is not, it's not, a, it's not very expensive. Uh, so it would be much, much less expensive. The other thing too, that, um, you know, once you've applied this, the results remain in the soil for, for years to come. It's, it's not that it would only be for that one year because you're also enhancing biology. And, and the, as long as you feed the biology, the, the, that will ju just keep, in, your soil will just keep improving. Um, and and uh, as regards uh, more scientific uh, research on that, yes, that has to be done. We don't have that at the moment. We do know that the results are are uh, are excellent, and and farmers who are practicing they have have make good uh, bokashi. They're very very happy with it. And and um, as I mentioned, I, that this lady that I that I saw in in the um, in the field day there a few months ago, uh, she was just so so happy that her maize was growing in a field where there was nothing growing before, and it was done. It was due to the fact that she had primed her seed with the Bokashi. So that's that's uh, as best I can answer your questions there, Seb. Okay, thank you very much, Paolo. Um, I see another hand from uh, Bridget. Bridget, you can go. I've unmuted. Uh, thank you, Omali. Um, I just wanted to add to the query from, from Kenya about farmers' uh, take-up. Our experience with the farmers we work with in, in Chongqui is that there has been a lot of take-up and farmers are training other farmers. And I've been at a field, field day where people have come and said, why didn't you train me, I'm in your area, why didn't you train me when the particular farmer gave a demonstration at the field day of how to make the Bokashi. And um, so there is take up. I don't know whether we're just lucky in our area, but but um, there is there has been a lot of take up. And what the particular farmer that um, Brother Paul referred to has actually trained a lot of farmers, not only in his area, but he keeps being asked from different parts of Zambia to come and do trainings. 
he's done hundreds, if not thousands of trainings as a farmer to other farmers. I just to say that, and I know that he was selling his book actually last year, at, if that gives you any idea. Um, but of course, it's hard to know whether what the prices are going to be now. Thank you. Right, thank you, Bridget. Uh, Mr. Kamidika, you had your hand up earlier, then you just dropped off. I don't know whether you still want to speak. No, actually, I had spoken and then dropped it down. I already uh, said something. Oh, we are unable to hear. Sorry. Oh, we are unable to hear. Sorry. Oh, um, I was saying. The, the, it was the earlier hand that you saw that I already spoke about it. Uh, when I was asking about, I think Bridget uh, and the Father Paul already answered my question because uh, it was based on whether there was a specific arranged time for the training of trainers. But I think that that's dependent on each organization, uh, its own arrangement, which I think is quite flexible, uh, which is good um, uh, for organization to uh, pick it up from there. Thank you very much. Uh, please leave your email addresses in the chat box so that we are able to share the presentations and uh, also that we are able to do, if there is any kind of follow-ups that we can uh, do. So all participants, please leave your email addresses in the, in the chat. Thank you. Are there any more comments, questions? I'm seeing a hand from Madam Benedict. Please unmute and speak. You are muted. She <laughs> tell her to press something. She's muted, so we can't hear what she's saying. Madam Madam, kindly unmute. You are muted. Okay. You. Can you hear me? Perfect. Hello? Now we can hear you. Hello? Hello? We can hear you. Hello. Okay. I just wanted to second what to what Mr. Kavirika said, the trainer of trainers. How can we have that group? Because in other areas. Uh, we don't have uh, such trainings about Bokash. So we need the trainer of trainers so that these people can train a lot of farmers. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that contribution. So after this, we we will circulate an email after yes. we have had a, we will have a discussion with uh, Kasisi and uh, all those organizations that want to send in their people for uh, for for the TOT, and then we'll make sure that uh, uh, these people are brought together and they decide on which week to have the TOT and then of course, how then these tra the trainers now will be supported through the other projects or the other organizations. Thank you. Uh, we are remaining with five minutes. Any comments, questions? All right, so thank you very much for all those that were able to join in. Thank you to uh, Father Paul, 
uh, for that wonderful presentation. And uh, we hope that we, we get uh, a larger audience next time. I would also like to emphasize that we'll be starting on time and hopefully everyone that is here is able to join next time at 12 hours or I mean 12 hours sharp so that we are able to uh, start together and finish together. The other thing that I would like to emphasize is the topics. We still have a lot of topics to cover. We have just talked about uh, uh, organic fertilizers. We have, not, we, we have not talked about landscape management and all other issues. There's so much that we have uh, on this series. We also um, appealing, we are also appealing to you as individual organizations to share these uh, Zoom links to, to your wider network so that we, we get this message out there as quickly as possible. The whole idea of this series is to get everyone that is listening in to think, what can I do to take this message uh, to as many people as possible? Because we believe that the transition into agroecology to sustainable ways of growing food is the only way that is going to have the long-term um, sustain and um, that is going to lead to long-term sustainability and also uh, to reduce the impact that these challenges would have on the farmers in future yeah so thank you very much we will end here today and hope to see you next friday thank you okay thank you very much okay Bye. Thank you.